What's up? So, from the title of the video, um, you know there's something wrong with the truck. This isn't really a video I wanted to make already. If you watched the last video when we were out driving the truck, apparently I screwed up. I actually forgot to put the plugs in the wastegate. I don't think you really can see down there, but where the reference line goes to the wastegate, there is actually uh, two other plugs that need to get plugged off. And I guess when I put the wastegate on, I had planned on putting them on and never did. And of course, I don't have a boost gauge yet. We were um, scanning it with the VCM scanner, uh, but it was only going to 105 kPa anytime it made boost, which we kind of knew was wrong, but we thought, well, it's only making, you know, like eight pounds of boost. That's the biggest, the spring that's in there, I believe. So no big deal, right? Um, but the reason it was only reading to 105 kPa is because the scanner wasn't set up for a two bar map sensor because I didn't know I had to do that. I mean, I never made any like full hard passes. I mean, if you watch the video, you saw what I actually did with it. It actually still runs fine. Seems to run fine, I should say. But uh, there's a lot of smoke coming out the, um, like the valve covers. And if I take the oil breather off, it actually puffs out pretty good. Like you put your hand over it. So to me, I think that that's compression from a cylinder. So I'm assuming I lifted a ring land, cracked a piston, uh, something like that. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. I have spare parts. It just means taking the engine apart and probably swapping out a piston. Kind of sucks, but oh well, mistakes happen. I don't know. What can I say, right? It happened, it happened. So what we're gonna do today is we are gonna do a leak down on the engine figure out which cylinder or cylinders, hopefully it's just like one cylinder, uh, has got a bad leak down, which means that's the one that's pushing it through into the crankcase. And then once we figure that out, then we'll figure out what we're gonna do. Uh, pull the motor out probably, take the head off, take the pan off. Like I said, I have spare pistons, so uh, it's not gonna really cost me any money. It's just a matter of taking it all apart again. I mean, on the bright side, it's pretty much uh, winter. It's crappy outside and cold, and it's been raining for the last month, which really sucks. So, I mean, uh, it's gonna get fixed, obviously, before springtime. I kinda wanna get it fixed soon because I don't really want the truck in here this winter because the plans are to work on the GTO, focus all my energy on working on that, uh, and then when time allows, I may work on my car, do some stuff uh, to get it ready for next year. I'm thinking about actually pulling the engine out of the car just to kind of go through it, make sure everything looks okay after it's been like two summers of racing around with it and stuff. Before I really crank the boost up, I think I might go through it, uh, make sure everything seems okay. So yeah, well, let's get to it. <laughs> I guess I should explain for those who may not know uh, when I said that those plugs in the wastegate were left out basically what that ends up doing it's like open ports so it's bleeding air which means instead of it making like eight pounds of boost it could have made like 20 so like I said I never really made like a full pass with it or anything so I can't really say for sure that that's what caused it if you guys have been following this video or this video series of this truck you know that when I got this engine it had a cracked piston in it and I changed it out but that doesn't mean that there wasn't another one that I didn't you know that had a hairline crack that I couldn't see maybe or something it is possible that it was just a failure in that way too I mean I'm obviously leaning more towards you know it was a mistake and it made too much boost right but was it I don't know so I went ahead and I pulled all the spark plugs out uh, I could show them to you. I mean, none of the spark plugs are burnt or like the tips melted off. You know, they all look relatively okay. So, I mean, I'm obviously a nitrous guy. My Nova used to be a nitrous combo. Uh, usually when there was a problem, like it lifting a ring land, it would melt a plug. Uh, this never did that, but obviously this is a whole different kind of situation. Plus also the other thing is that I was having issues with what I figured to be false knock, uh, while well, the knock sensors were pulling timing. So it is possible that there was already something wrong, like a cracked piston or something, and that's what was causing the knock, maybe. I never really heard any knock myself. The, the O2s, or the knock sensors were picking it up, and I determined or thought it was probably false knock. But 
Anyway, so now I'm going to do a leak down and uh, we'll see what we find. Basically for the leak down tester, there's a hose that goes into the spark plug and there's this gauge. And you, oops, you set it to, uh, you plug it into the air, set it so it's at zero, like that. Then you hook the two together. Now you have to make sure that the engine is at top dead center, like that piston. So both valves are closed or you think they're closed, right? So top dead. And then you hook up the two and then you just see what, how much it's leaking. So just hold on. See if I can do this with one hand. Okay, so then if you look at the gauge here, it's gone to like below 20%, which is good. So this one is number three. We know number three is fine. So I'm gonna do them all. Uh, no point in really showing you guys every single one, but when I do find a bad one, then I will show you. Sometimes you gotta turn the crank a little bit and get it to that right spot where the valves are closed all the way, and then, then set it. Because when I first put this one on, it was reading like nothing, zero, but I couldn't really hear. I could hear air coming out the intake, so I knew it wasn't that it was one of the valves. So yeah, I'm gonna continue doing this, and like I said, if when I find one that's bad, then I'll show you guys. All right, so I did the whole passenger side, and this is what I've come up with. So the first one is only 10%, 20 on this one, 10 and 10, which is really good. On to the other side, which is, uh, I'm assuming that's the side. Uh, I've heard that seven is a bad one on these engines, so maybe it's seven. All right, so I did them all. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> And this is what I came up with. As I said before, passenger side, perfect. 10, 20%, which is really good for a higher mileage engine. Uh, this side, same thing, except number five. So number five, if you take a look at the gauge, it's bad, it's 80%. And it doesn't matter where I turn it, it's 80%. Like I get it there and, and if I put my hand over here, I don't know if you can hear it, probably not, but I can actually feel air coming through. And I mean, when it's running, I take that off. There's lots running through because it's running and making compression. So it's that cylinder, it's number five. The only thing that I'm starting to think, I'm pretty positive that's the same cylinder that had a broken piston in it before when I first got the engine. So when I, when I changed pistons, I used the rod that came with the engine. So I don't know if the rod is stretched somehow a little bit or bent a little bit maybe, and that's causing the piston to break. Because like I said, when I took this piston, I'm pretty positive, I'm have to double check, but I'm pretty positive that was the piston that was cracked. When I first got this engine running, it ran like a dream, quiet as can be. And then it started ticking. And then obviously it was pulling timing from the knock sensor. So I don't know if maybe that piston broke after I ran it a bit. Could also be because of when the gas was in there and it locked it up. Maybe that caused an issue. I'm gonna have to pull the head. Obviously change it out, I'm gonna have to pull the motor out. Or my other thought is on my Nova, I have a removable cross member underneath the oil pan makes pulling the oil pan super easy if I want to check bearings or change a piston just like this. Uh, when this was a nitrous combo and I melted some pistons, it was nice. I could pull the pan, I could swap out a piston, no problem. So I'm kind of kicking around the idea of doing that on this one. Cut the cross member out, make a new removable one, weld it back in. Uh, I'm not worried about cutting it out that it's going to lose strength. This thing's cut out. I put the car in the back bumper, you know, bounce down, didn't do any damage. Uh, this obviously isn't gonna do that. So I'm not really too, too worried about it. And I, the piece that I put in there, a removable piece would be strong, made out of some DOM tubing and flat steel and all welded up good and bolted in with grade eight bolts and all that kind of stuff. So if I did that, all I'd have to do is pull the intake, pull the head, pull the oil pan, knock out the piston, put in another one. Let's of course there's damage to the block or something, but there shouldn't be, I, I can't see it. I don't know what else we're gonna do tonight. I don't know if I'm gonna start tearing anything apart, but we'll see what happens.
I took a look back at some pictures and stuff and it looks like the piston that broke when I got the engine was number seven. So, I mean, it's possible that piston was cracked and I just didn't notice, I don't know. But anyways, I guess what I'm gonna have to do now is decide exactly what I wanna do, whether I wanna do the cross member thing or pull the whole engine out. I mean, I could just, if I do the cross member thing, all I have to do is pull the intake, the head, you know, the exhaust, um, manifold, the alternator bracket, of course, would have to come off. I'd be able to get the head off and then just pull the pan, swap out the piston, put it back together. My other choice is pull the engine. The thing that sucks about this thing is to pull the engine, you gotta pull the transmission out. With the oil pan that I used, the cross member is super, super tight. So that's another good reason for getting rid of it if I cut it out and put a removable one, because the removable one I can ha make it so it has lots of clearance. Right now it's pretty tight in there. And then I'd be able to pull the engine and transmission out together. I'm going to think about it tonight and come up with a decision by tomorrow. And then tomorrow we'll get started on pulling it apart one way or the other. So I'll see you tomorrow. All right, it's the next day. So I'm out here again. Uh, going to work on the truck for a little while. So I still haven't decided if I'm going to pull the engine out or cut that cross member. Uh, what my plan is... Uh, is to like lift it up, put it on some jack stands after, and then take a good look and kind of, you know, figure out what I want to do there. If I'm going to pull the head off, I have to take the intake off, the coils and all that, of course, the exhaust manifold would have to come off, uh, charge tube, alternator assembly has to come off or at least move forward to get the head off. So I'm going to start with the intake and some other small parts, uh, see how far we get. Boom, the intake's off. I didn't bother filming it. it only takes a second really they come off really easy so I got that off next I'll take like the coil pack off all right so I got the exhaust manifold off which is a real pain because I didn't realize that the last bolt on the very back is like pretty much stuffed into the firewall so that uh, that made it kind of difficult to get off I'm gonna have to like air the truck up and get under there and like drain the water out of it and stuff like what I really want to do right now my plan was to at least take the head off, take a look in there and see what the damage is. You know, if there's any damage to the block, which I don't think there should be, but if there was, of course, then the engine has to come out for sure. If there's no damage to the block, then it would be simple as just changing the piston out. As long as I can actually get at the head bolts, that's the thing. I don't even know if I could get the head off without taking the motor out. I'm not 100% sure. I figured for sure this manifold was never gonna come out, but I actually got the bolt out. I got the truck jacked up. I got all the water drained out. I actually took the block heater out of the driver's side to let all the water drain out. And I also used the pet cock on the radiator. Drained all the water. Um, now, the next thing I need to do or want to do is take the head off. So now what I'm gonna do is just unbolt the head. Uh, I already took these bolts out. I might have to take the last one out and actually push it forward, take the belt off and everything, which is fine. I took those small 10 mils out and I started to loosen these ones. I really hate the fact that I have to do this. It really sucks. All right, so I got, I got all the bolts out. One's kind of real, really a pain to get it. And now, I can't take the head off, oops, because I have to loosen off this thing. I have it mostly off. All right guys, well here's the cylinder head. This is number five. As you can see, it all looks good. Obviously it wasn't anything to do with the cylinder head, but everything looks good there. And then here's the piston, which also looks good. I don't see any damage to it. but it's probably a ring land broken, just like uh, the other one was. Uh, it was this one before, number seven, on the engine before, so I'm assuming that's what it is. But the cylinder wall looks really good. There's no pitting or marks in it. So that's good to know that it's, uh, it's just the piston. Nothing else seems damaged. Uh, the cylinder wall's good, which means the block and everything's good, so that's awesome. Uh, so now, like I said, the next thing I got to decide is do I have to pull the whole engine out or can I pull, cut the cross member out? 
uh, yeah, but that's gonna have to wait till the next video. At least in this one, we kind of found out that uh, which cylinder it was and that it didn't really do a ton of damage. I already have a piston for it, so that's no big deal. But uh, stay tuned next time. We figure out how we're gonna pull the motor apart or pull it out or what we're gonna do or if we're gonna cut that cross member up and uh, get this thing fixed up. So like always, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. We'll check you later. <music>